So Android 15 introduced some low-level changes that can boost the performance of an app by up to 10%, decrease the launch time by 30%, and actually save just under 5% of battery usage. Now to do that, you have to be able to support 16K page sizes, and Google are now moving to mandate that feature for future versions of apps that are submitted to Google Play. So what are 16K page sizes? Why does that matter? How does it make these things run faster and more uh, battery efficient? Well, that's what I want to cover in this video. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. <laughs> Okay, so all modern computer systems, that's Windows and Linux, Mac OS and so on, all use a thing called virtual memory. So when an app is running in memory, it doesn't actually occupy the address space that it thinks it does. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, that every app wants to start at address zero, and then it starts progressing through the instructions that it's running, and it might allocate bits of memory inside of a fixed address space from zero and upwards. Now, obviously, every app can't occupy zero. Every app can't occupy the same address as other apps. So what we use is virtual memory. Each app actually thinks it has a zero to whatever size it's using. But actually, in reality, it's all over the place in the physical memory. And there's a mapping between the physical memory and the virtual memory. And there's a part of a CPU which is called the memory management unit. Now, the memory management unit is programmed by the operating system, so in this case, Android and the Linux kernel. And it basically says, when you want to find this address for this app, you'll actually find it over there. So it's a table that says, if you want this, it's over there. And the memory management unit is actually used all the time because every single address access by the uh, operating system it goes through the memory management unit and to speed that up it actually uses something called a transition lookup buffer which is basically a cache so the most commonly used address is you don't need to go into the mmu and ask it where you know where do i find this uh, page it says oh i remember you used this page a few milliseconds ago so it's in the same place so i'm just going to go there directly without having to interrogate the mmu but of course any efficiencies that we can have in memory handling will have an efficiency uh, impact on the actual uh, app, the performance of the app and the battery efficiency of it. And that's what's happening with this uh, change that uh, Google are bringing in. Now, traditionally, Linux uses 4K page sizes. That means that when you actually allocate a block of memory to an app from a physical block to a virtual block, they come in chunks of 4K. And there are reasons for that historically, but obviously you don't want to do it on a per byte basis or even on a 64 bit basis because that would be way too much memory to allocate. So 4K is what we've been using up until now. Now, ARM processors are able to use other page sizes. For example, they can use 16K or 64K. Intel processors can only use 4K and then they jump up to some really huge numbers. There's no granularity down at the lower level. So on ARM64 based processors, there is this option to jump to 16K. And that's what Google has done. It's actually enabled 16K page sizes, so the block of memory you allocate inside of the uh, memory and map it in the MMU, inside of Android, because uh, inside of Linux, uh, and that's been in enabled in Android 15 if the OEM, the phone manufacturer, wanted to enable that. Now, of course, the advantage is that now, where there were four lots of 4K pages to make up 16K, which means you do four lots of interrogating the lookup buffer, interrogating the MMU, now you don't need to. You can just say, oh, we've got a bigger contiguous chunk of memory, we'll just keep on going and we don't need to bother with the MMU because we know we've got this 16K pay site. Now there is a, a slight disadvantage if you are allocating, let's say, something like just 7K. And of course, before you would allocate one block of 4K, then another block of 4K, that would give you 8K, and you have a little bit wasted. Okay, now when you allocate 16K, then you're going to have a bit more wasted. But actually, that if that waste isn't so much of a big impact, considering that we're now dealing with uh, devices which have such a large amount of physical memory, and the advantages outweigh that disadvantage when it comes to, as I said, performance and to power efficiency.
So starting the 1st of November 2025, all new apps and update to existing apps submitted to Google Play that are targeting Android 15 or above devices must support 16K page sizes. Now, what does that mean for app developers? Well, if your app is purely written in Java or in Kotlin, then there's no problems whatsoever because the underlying stuff, the virtual machine for Java uh, handles all of that. All of Google's libraries, of course, handle it. So there's no changes whatsoever. However, if there's any native code, so any ARM64 code that's uh, inside of your application, and that means probably you've written some C code, some C++ code, and then that's of course then uh, gone to native ARM64 code, then you may need to handle uh, this new change. So why is that? Well, the main thing is what they call page alignment. Some very, very low co uh, level code kind of assumes this 4K number because it's historically been around for such a long time. So they say, well, okay, I know that the next page is gonna be 4K later on, or they might try to do some, you know, some jumping through memory by working, you know, this kind of stuff based on this idea of 4K. Uh, and of course, that's no longer true. It could be 16K, which means the memory may be laid out differently uh, than you think. And also, if you're using just Kotlin or Java, but there are some libraries that you're using that are using native code, they need to also be updated. So depending on how your app is written, you're gonna to need to make sure that you are using the latest libraries, that you are compiling with the correct tool chain so that you get this 16K alignment. Now, the good news is, of course, is that anything that's aligned on a 16K boundary will also be aligned automatically on a 4K boundary because it's just four times uh, four. So that's really useful. That means there's no, like you don't need a binary that supports 4K and another binary that supports 16K. If you support 16K, you automatically support 4K because the, the alignment will uh, work out automatically. So basically, just make sure you're using the latest libraries, that you're using latest third-party libraries, and that you're using the latest tool chains, and then basically you will support 16K, and all is great. Now, Google has some documentation on uh, how you can test 16K alignment uh, with emulators and so on and so on, so lots of documentation available, but basically this is a good step for the Android ecosystem, moving over to 16K pages, and and app developers now just need to double check that their apps run okay without kind of crashing because they're expecting something on a different boundary or something like that. It's all very, very low level stuff. But by enabling it, we're getting these performance increases and the battery efficiency increases just because we're going from 4K to 16K. And as I said, this is something that only applies to ARM64 chips, isn't something you can do on Intel. Of course, there are some big examples of this already running out there in the real world. The Raspberry Pi 5 uses 16K pages already. And of course, so do Apple Macs running on Apple Silicon. So this is stuff that's already out there in the real world. And now Google are bringing Android into a line with this. And there we have it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Please also do check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.